Hi, this is Klaus with Electronics Unmasked. Just make your projects better with digital filters. Today we make dimensioning easy with an Excel sheet. Filters are needed for maker projects much more often than you think. With microprocessor projects, one always has the problem that the processor clocks interfere with analog inputs. In this example, the battery voltage of a lithium-ion battery is measured. Low frequency interference can be eliminated quite well with digital filters. If you know how to do it, it's relatively easy and doesn't cost you anything. In addition, you can easily change and optimize the filter properties. There are many ways to implement digital filters. I make a suggestion here that you can use directly for maker projects if you want to filter any readings. In a later episode I will show another interesting application of these filters. Here I'm taking this recursion formula. Xn are the samples of our input signal. Yn represents the samples for the filter response. Coefficients a0, a1, b0, b1 and b2 are very important for the filter characteristics. You can use this to implement a Butterworth filter, for example, and I have transferred the formula to a small Excel sheet that you can download. Don't miss anything. Here we simply entered the input signal as a sequence of numbers. I have a simple voltage step in my example. I choose this because for filters in general the so-called step response is very interesting. We will see why in a moment. In principle we can enter any other signal that interests us. Here are the filter coefficients for our recursion formula which is implemented in the Excel sheet. You can enter your own filter coefficients here, which you may find in tables yourself. Before we look at a higher order filter, I would like to briefly show what the simplest digital filter looks like. It's the floating average. We only need two of the filter coefficients. There is a small gimmick here. We can use this pitch to set the number of values over which the average shall be computed. And I will just play through a few values and you can see the effect on the time signal directly. It's a simple and quite effective way to filter out noise or just to get the floating average. But there are much better filters. With the next sheet we can now calculate more complex filtering. My coefficients here define what is called a Butterworth filter. And I've also added a small feature here. You can change the coefficients with that pitch here. Because it's a higher order filter, we can use it to get steeper slopes in the time domain and in the frequency domain in case we need it. However, we then get overshoots due to resonance effects. And we can see all of this right here in our Excel simulation. Now I want to draw your attention on an interesting behavior of this filter. I'm slowly approaching a critical limit with our pitch. We see the resonance effect getting stronger and stronger. And at some point the filter becomes unstable and starts to oscillate itself. What can we do with it now? We can analyze how our filter is processing signals that we have in our project. We may want to have optimal damping so that the filter settles exactly on the measured value. Or maybe it should swing in as quickly as possible instead. In that case we have to accept an overshoot. As before, you play with the pitch until your signal is fine. And then you can take the filter coefficients for your code. As I said, we can enter any input signal in our Excel sheet. So, of course, we can also simulate a disturbed signal. Here I take a signal that is superimposed by short spikes. And this effect occurs quite often 
because it can be caused by any switching operation in principle. And here we use the same procedure. We simply play with the filter coefficients to see which setting we can use to optimally dampen the interference without losing the wanted signal. Hey, I can easily work with this without having to do complicated filter calculations. I don't need a network analysis program either. We have an Excel tool to easily simulate digital filters without having to overcome hurdles. As a hobbyist, you need neither a filter theory nor a network analysis program. We can directly look at our input signals and the filter response in the time domain. Determining the filter coefficients is very simple. In addition, we can also simulate the effectiveness of a filter against interference. Maybe the video whets your appetite for more? If you want to dive a bit deeper in filters, I put a link to another interesting video. In the coming episodes, we will test such a filter with an Arduino board. And I will explain a surprisingly different application. Now stay tuned and don't forget to support the channel. See you soon in the coming episodes.